Hi, Angela Wolf here, owner of Angela Wolf Patterns and Online Academy, and today you are in my studio. We are remote because of the travel restrictions, so welcome to my studio. And in this season of It's So Easy, the first few episodes, I'm going to be working on the Bella Knit Top. It's a simple knit top. It has a faced V-neck neckline, and the sleeves are come in a few different ways, but today we're gonna to talk about embroidering on mesh and piecing this together. So let's take a look at the pattern. So here we have, it's just a simple knit pattern, and I will go over the fabric, but one thing I wanna remind you of, and I've mentioned this so many times, but make sure you look at the exact measurements on the pattern because that will help you decide what size you're going to cut. So the top's a little fitted at the top and then it's looser at the bottom. So it should be easy for you to adjust that pattern. All right, so let's take a look at some of the fabrics. You want something that's a little thicker, something that's not like a rayon knit, which you know I love, but it needs to be thicker than that. So the lightest fabric I would go is an ITY knit. You need something with a little stretch, but you want something that this, this particular top has a facing inside the neckline. So you wanna make sure that if you have two layers of fabric in here, you can't see through to the right side. So ITY knit would be a good option. Here's a Ponty knit. This is a good option. This actually would be really nice. Let's see if I, it has a light stretch. That would be a good option. Here's a novelty knit. They always call it novelty knit when they never know what's inside of it, <laughs> what the content is. But I found this one, it's a great piece. It has a light stretch, it's a little thicker. This is the one I'll be using for my Bella. And then here's a crepe knit. It has a real, it's a brushed surface. It's really soft fabric, a light stretch. There's also something called a suede knit. That would be a great one. And again, just make sure that if you have two layers, you can't see through to the right side because that's what this will have when, we're, when we add the facing. So in this lesson, I wanna talk about the sleeve. So as you can see behind me, I actually embroidered my mesh first. So here's an example of that. This actually, I had planned on doing two sleeves, so I just butted them up against each other, thought I would just embroider two sleeves at the same time. The only problem is if you look back at this sleeve, there's an elastic casing on here. So I need to make room for the, ex the excess because this is actually folded over twice for the hem allowance. So when you're placing your embroidery for your sleeve, you wanna make sure that there's enough room here that you're gonna be able to fold that over twice, add the elastic, and it doesn't interfere with your embroidery. Okay, so here's some mesh that I have. This is just a light stretch fabric. I like to cut enough fabric that it will be larger than my sleeve because you're going to hoop it, embroider your fabric, and then cut out your sleeve. So let's go ahead and hoop the stabilizer. I'm gonna be using adhesive sew and wash. That means that there's a sticky part of this stabilizer and it washes away. So how you hoop this, just gonna grab a pin. There we go. So what this is, is this actually feels like fabric on one side, paper on the other. This will actually peel back, but I'm gonna just put it in the hoop. So the paper side goes up. And if you have one of those larger hoops that you can fit an entire sleeve in, that's a great way to do that. Embroider the entire sleeve in one. All right, so I'm just gonna. There we go. So again, the paper side is up. I'm gonna score the paper. Peel this back, and then you'll take your mesh fabric, and this is sticky now. So you could stick this fabric right to it. You don't have to worry about this sliding around. Of course, you could also hoop using a different, you know, there's other stabilizers you can use, which I will show you in later episodes. But for the mesh, this seems to work out just fine. Now, when you're laying out your fabric for embroidery, depending on where you're going to put this embroidery on your sleeve, let me just show you one that I have finished here. You can see I have the embroidery all at the bottom. Now, when you're going to hoop, you need to keep in mind that after you embroider, then you're gonna cut your sleeve. So you wouldn't want to start way down here 
because that won't give you enough room for a seam allowance. So I kind of just place my fabric where I'll have plenty of room to maneuver my sleeve when I'm finished. So just keep that in mind when you're putting your fabric out. So uh, this mesh is just cut a little bit wider than my actual sleeve pattern, as you can see here. All right, so you just stick the mesh on here, has sticky back, and we're good to go. So let's go to the sewing machine and I'll show you some tips for embroidering this. Okay, so I'm gonna be using just one of my own designs here and it's built up of quite a few little flowers. So when I go in here, just something, you might wanna check your machine if it has this because it's really easy to change colors. When I go under edit, click on color, and there's a color shuffle. So maybe I'm making a different top that I need completely different colors. If you go under random, well, there's actually a few options you have under here, but go under random and let's just pick a few different colors. Maybe, maybe you want, we want green and purples for this next one. Click OK. And it actually gives you a screen of all these different options. You can keep refreshing. And once you go through here, that's an easy way to change the colors of the entire design in one cl quick click. All right, click set. And I notice I still have a few other designs here that need to be changed. And all you have to do is scroll down, it will show you the design. And you can just pick a color. So that's an easy way to alter your colors. Now I'm just gonna go back, just by hitting the back button, and I'm back to my original light colors that will look fabulous on this mesh. Now in the hoop right now, this is the largest hoop. So I'm able to embroider my entire sleeve all in one step. So click on embroidery, and you're ready to go. All right, so I've already embroidered this, so let me show you how to cut out your sleeve. All right, set this to the side. So here's my sleeve. And again, I mentioned that after you're finished embroidering, that's when you're gonna cut your sleeve out. So I rinsed out my stabilizer, and depending on what brand you use, make sure you use hot water, and that usually will help get rid of all the residue. And the next thing I do is just lay out my pattern underneath this fabric. So now I can adjust the embroidery designs where I need them to go. Now look, if I want the designs to go here, uh, I'm missing the top of my sleeve. So I'm gonna need to slide this up. And now my designs will be a little higher, but remember there's a a seam allowance here for the elastic casing. So if I didn't like that, what I could do is add more embroidery to the bottom, but that's why I mentioned, make sure that you have plenty of room at the top for when you go to cut your sleeve so you can place your embroidery where you want it to go. All right, and this is a cutting mat, so I'm just going to go ahead and just trim away. Now when I cut this sleeve out, notice I'm going just on the outside, about an eighth of an inch on the outside of the pattern. The reason for this is mesh is a little tricky to work with. And when I go to sew this, when I sew the sleeve into the uh, top, which you'll see in the next episode, I wanna make sure that I'm not missing any of the mesh when I go to cut this. So if I give myself just a little bit of extra room, keep that in mind, then when I go to sew it, I can actually push this out just a little bit, which you'll see next time. You'll just have to trust me on that one. All right, and so here is my sleeve. And I also have the other sleeve here. So both are ready to go. And the last thing I need to do here with this sleeve is, put this back down. A couple markings that you need, which will be the shoulder notch, the front sleeve, and the back sleeve. So something I did not mention about this embroidery is that because this is so see-through, what are you gonna use for the bobbin? I'm actually using rayon, just a rayon uh, embroidery thread, but I'm using the same thread in the bobbin. Now, when this sleeve is on, it's going to be cuffed. So you're not going to see the back side, but it's so see-through that maybe 
when you have this on, you can just see one of the other sides. So if you use the same color embroidery thread as the top color, then no matter how much embroidery you add on this sleeve, you'll, it'll always look the same from both sides. Now, because it looks the same from both sides, that's why I always put these notches, because when it comes time to put this into the top, you wanna make sure that each sleeve is going on the right place. All right, so those are our sleeves. And then you need to cut out your top, which I'm gonna be using this fabric here. Sew together your shoulders and press your shoulders open. And the reason you wanna do that is for less bulk. You'll also have uh, two facing pieces that you'll be adding interfacing to. And I'll see you in the next lesson because in the next lesson, we're going to insert the sleeve and work on the neckline. See you then.